Good morning, Hockey Nation fans. This is your Detroit Red Wings edition update for whatever day this is, February the 15th, 2023. Can you believe it's 2023? Can you believe we are halfway through September, February? Please don't rush it. Let's not go crazy. Good morning to Real Deal Prime. Yes, Jakob Verana is going to play a game in the NHL with the Detroit Red Wings. Who knew? Illumi. Yes. I would not be surprised to see him score. He's been doing quite well. We'll take a look at that. And the Red Wings have been doing quite well. It's unfortunate that he's coming in because Lucas Raymond is dropping out. However, right now, the Red Wings are on a three-game winning streak, which is I, ne- I definitely did not predict that. I was predicting something else. Good morning, in your tab. Thank you for joining. We are always happy to have you. And, of course, we love seeing you at night on Hockey Nation Live. And we will have to coordinate something with Coach Frenchie so that we are all on together again, at least maybe this week or next. In the meantime, I think if you followed my previous posts, I was thinking the Red Wings are in trouble this month. They started off that way with a 5-2 loss to Edmonton. And we saw they're going Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary. So home and away. That's what I'm wondering, and I think that's definitely a possibility. You know, this is a reasonably sized contract if he is scoring. I don't know what bridges he has burned in Detroit. We know that he was out for two months in the player assistance program. He's been in the AHL. He didn't get any points in his first six games, but he's had basically a point a game since then. So I think he has um, 11 points in 17 games in the AHL, 11 of those coming in the last 11 games. So it's not too bad. I mean, it's not like he's destroying the NHL or the AHL, but, you know, um, he's doing pretty well there with Grand Rapids. So that is good. And you're right. You know, Illumi, they were predicting this was the, he had played his last game as Detroit Red Wing. But I think what Enertap here is saying is kind of what I'm wondering. So first off, big win the other night for the Red Wings. Uh, we will get into that. Again, the bad part of this, that Jakob Vran is getting called up, it is because Lucas Raymond is on the IR. And it says, you know, it's retroactive, and I have to check the date on why. So has he been hurt for a bit? Probably. I think he was, he was hurt in one of the games, maybe. I'm trying to remember. I seem to remember him getting hurt in the one game. So we will see how long he is out for. If he's on the IR, it's not good. That's probably for a long period of time. So maybe Vran has an opportunity to redeem himself here. He is talented. He is a great shooter. You know, hopefully he has his head screwed on tight. He came out of training camp. And he looked very good. But then you saw him in interviews and he looked very rough. And then, you know, it was like two games in and he's gone in the player assistance for two months. Been in the AHL ever since. He did practice with the team and then before he was sent down. So is he a distraction? Is he a problem outside of that? Is You know, I just don't know. Or is it just he's been trying to get his act together and he's been showing he's a good citizen? The reports coming out didn't sound like it. So, but, you know, let's hope. So um, going on to the game versus the Vancouver Canucks. What? So now they've beaten the Canucks twice. This time was a thumping. The, the biggest problem in Vancouver, as we know, is the goaltending. So this wasn't Bruce Boudreau. This was goaltending. Kind of rough. Their defense is horrible, but the goaltending is terrible. So for the Red Wings, who are typically goal strapped cannot score big time although they've been getting big time performances from dylan larkin and jonathan berger has been playing incredibly well and that would not stop in this game so the red wings basically went up two well i don't know two uh, yeah two nothing after the first with dylan larkin's 19th and 20th of the year i remember when he could never score more than 20 for a while and we know he had 30 goal season but this is all you know, since the All-Star break, has he scored in three straight games since the All-Star break or four? I have to go back and look, but he's definitely got seven points in his last five games, as we will see. So this was continued very, very good play by the captain, making it 2 nothing. Sheldon Drees make, gets his seventh of the year, so that's interesting, from Garland and Kuzmenko, who has been a great pickup by Vancouver. I mean, Kuzmenko is like, I'm glad they kept him. He's a real talented Russian player. That made it Two to one, but then Robbie Fabry put it ahead three to one. Gustav Lindstrom made it four, and then P.S. Suter made it five, and then John Dembergen making it six. John Dembergen getting his 11th is great news. He's now up to, I think, 21 points on the season, 22. So that, that's all very good news that he is producing in 39 games. So he's, he's on pace to be a 20 goal scorer in the NHL. 
why doesn't he sign him? He wants big bucks, which I think is weird. Like he hasn't, he's had not really been able to come back and score at any clip. He's had so many injuries. I think that he would get a one year bridge deal. Frankly, I don't know why he would get anything. Now Larkin on the other hand, obviously needs to be signed. That contract I think has been firmly cemented. You've got Bo Horvat playing over for the New York Islanders in a similar role to Dylan Larkin, an unlikely number one center, but still filling out that role pretty well. Um, 34 goals for Bo Horvat, and he gets 8.5 million times eight. What is Dylan Larkin worth? 8.5 times eight? Mika Zibanejad is 8.5. So what am I missing? This seems like that should get done. Bertuzzi, I think, should get, you know, they go like... I think there's 4.6 or 8 right now. So whatever the qualifying number is, is probably 10 or 20%. And that's what he should get. He, he hasn't shown that he can return to the 27-goal uh, clip. I think he's got two goals on the season. And right now he's not that important. Like you see Berggren stepping in and playing well. Uh, I don't know. I think that's more important. Get Larkin signed up and then worry about Bertuzzi or trade him. So, you know, the other guy he scored and kind of tricked this again is Philip Zina. Hasn't had any points since. Only 10 minutes and 53 sen- seconds in total ice time last night. So back to being a perimeter player. Uh, three points for Robbie Fabry on the night. Goal and two assists. That's good news. Two assists for Rasmussen. Larkin getting two more goals in this game. And only played 17-38. I didn't realize he played so little. The guy who you really want to see more consistency out of is Kubelik and the other guy is Perron. I mean, these guys playing 12 minutes and 13 minutes is not why they're here. I mean, they were so important to the success of the team early on. No Lucas Raymond in this game. So that, you know, that hurts uh, going forward. And I think Billy Husso grew a good game. But in the end, this is more about Colin Delia and that. And that that's just tough. You know, Spencer Martin didn't have much success and then neither is Delia. So that. This team's just going to continue to struggle. It's nice to see Gustav Lindstrom get two points. I don't really think you want him in there for his offense necessarily. However, if he's a really solid six, number six defenseman, that's more likely what he's going to be. Uh, 23 minutes for Ben Sherratt, and he wasn't a minus. So this is you know maybe confidence boosting. I don't know what that means, but I think just play well, Ben Sherratt. You're a veteran. Let's play well. Um, 21 minutes for Ronick. And then Moritz Sider continues to produce real well. No, interesting, no Wallman still in this game, so I'm not sure how long he is out for. So now they they have a rematch against the Edmonton Oilers. 6-3-1 and one in their last 10 all of a sudden. The Red Wings, who I was thinking could end in month 4 and 8, are definitely not in that position. And they're looking pretty good. If they won, they beat Calgary and they beat Vancouver twice. Edmonton is going to be tough again. Edmonton is playing at a high, high clip, 7-1-2. and two. They did lose one game, however... They're 30, 19, and 5, and they were kind of like middling. You know, they're just like three or four games above 500 for a long time. Um, don't look now, but Connor McDavid has 97 points, guy. <laughs> so hopefully he doesn't get 100 tonight, getting the three points all at once, but he is that type of player where he could do that. Who wants to get his money's worth? Lambert played him 27-49 last night. So I think this is a reflection of kind of what we thought. Like, I was like, why are you moving Barzal to the wing? However, it's very calculated. Barzal was like 35% in the faceoff, and we know Borhorvat's like 55%, and that seems to be the magic. You know, so I think that deal is looking very good for them. I was kind of questioning it because I thought, are you going to play those guys one, two, three? But that, and I didn't really want to put Barzal in the wing, but that seems to be working out for them. It's taking the pressure off Barzal. Uh, they lose to Ottawa 3-2, to two, but in that game, you're right. Like stuzler has got 24 goals, by the way, guys. 22 goals for Brock Nelson. Barzal gets an assist, so he played you know, wing on that power play. Um, no points in this game for our friend Bo Horvat, but overall, this has worked out pretty well for them. He now has 34 goals, 24 assists, 58 points in 54 games. And he's had three goals in his last five games. So that's pretty good. And I think the biggest thing is the face-off. So he is 52.6% in the face-off circle since coming over from Vancouver. Four points in his last five games. He continues the Cy Young-type stats of three goals and one assist. But I think it's really like if he can continue to score, you've got a real good playmaker that 
if they keep Barzal on his wing and he's winning faceoffs, that is a good setup. Yeah, for sure. He played a lot, but he didn't get any points. <laughs> so that's weird. So here we go, Red Wings. This is, you know, they're coming into this pretty good. So even if they drop this game, they will still be three and two on the month for a month that I thought they might, they could, presu- you know, presumably be four and eight. Uh, McDavid not really slowing down much here. Eight points in five games. So it's a little bit off his top clip, but pretty much close to 1.6 points a game. As we mentioned, Larkin, five goals his last five games. And I think those have all come in the last three or four since the All-Star break. Plus four for Rasmussen. You want to see him get a few more points. This day, Harnag defenseman, he's a big guy, has worked out really well, by the way, for uh, Edmonton. He's kind of fit in here pretty well. And Evander King getting four goals the last five games. That is really good coming back from the wrist injury. So they're clicking on all cylinders. They are such a much better team with Evander Kane in the lineup. Makes such a huge difference. Not surprising. Um, Skinner didn't do too well. Presumably it'll be Huso versus Campbell. They seem to be going all in on Huso in, in all tough games and giving him all the workload he can handle. Rightfully so. The guy keeps winning. He is 20, 12, and 5. You, t- you know, he had 960 save percentage against Vancouver, which is helpful. I don't know if you're going to see that the rest of the year, but, you know, we would expect him to be up back around the 910, 915 would be really nice. So we'll see if he can average that out. So don't look now, but suddenly, and we kind of looked at this last game, you know, while the Metropolitan and the Atlantic top six spots seem kind of locked in, if you look at the wild card race, Detroit is in six, but they got games in hand. So Pittsburgh got 63 points to their 56, one game in hand for Detroit. So they're not likely to catch them. But they have three games in hand, or four games in hand on Washington. So, you know, that's a potential eight points there. 64. (laughs) Can they do that? I don't know. That's tough, man. And what the heck is with Buffalo? Buffalo is up and down. I expect Florida to be up and down like a yo-yo, and they got a bunch of games like ahead of everyone, as do the Islanders, which is why I don't really think that, you know, they're going to really make a serious run. But I thought Buffalo for sure, (laughs) for sure would. And Ottawa is making a little bit of a push here. You know, I kind of thought it would be more Philadelphia, but they're, they're still lacking some bodies in Philly. Um, Buffalo, what's going to go? Are they going to go on like another five game winning streak and then a three game losing streak? Yeah, maybe, right? Like you would think, but you know, they've been sticking with that second wild card space. I just don't think Detroit's going to flex up in there. But if you look at their schedule, they've gone through a really tough part of it. So they're going to come head to head with Ottawa. So, you know, if they face Edmonton and Calgary in back to backs, that's got to be tough. Are they going to split? The goaltending duties at some point here, you would think that Halberg gets a start. I mean, it's pretty tough if Huso is going back to back to back. Like, it's kind of what this is here and even here. Like, there's not a lot of rest for him. You're risking getting him hurt. It's not great. Seattle's been struggling a little bit lately, but they're always a tough team. And then you got the before mentioned Washington Capitals here. The Rangers are cooking the Tarasenko deal. That's a huge deal for them. And then you got t- Tampa. So, this all remains very, very tough. However, getting out of this first four games, three and one, I'm shocked at. So can they split the rest of this week? Can they lose to Edmonton, win to Calgary, or win to, you know, that's what they kind of need to do. They need to win one of these two games or one of these three at least. And then that's not too bad, you know, Uh, and then worry about the Washington game. And that's the game where maybe they gain some some space or gain some opportunity. I was kind of thinking these guys should drop a little bit, though, like, Go for the Connor Bedard slash Adam Ventilli slash, uh, you know, the Swedish guy. What's his name? Not Nielsen. Um, why am I forgetting the, the Swedish guy's name? Um, Carlson, not Nielsen, Carlson. Leo Carlson. Like, get one of those guys or get Mishkov. You know, like, that would be better, wouldn't it? Isn't that better than, you know, finishing 10th and 11th and getting a guy that's not going to impact your lineup? Um Seems like it would be smart to me. Uh, now, I, I will say that this was an unfortunate, you know, with this win, there was some sad news, which, as you know, hey, real deal. Uh, there was a shooting on the Michigan campus, and, you know, I think there was a moment of silence for them. And the, the Detroit players are obviously thinking of everybody back home with that tragic issue. Yeah, tell that to Montreal. Come on, guys. 
Because Montreal, are they on two game winning streak or three? Did they fall off or are they still like, let's take a look. Montreal won again, right? Four nothing. So is it three games now? Where they've won three. But Ottawa's doing well, so and they're going to come smack into Ottawa, so it's going to be interesting. Pretty tough schedule here, I mean. But Montreal's doing it against teams they should, and then they beat Edmonton, right? Um, let's just take a look here. Oh, geez. Is this going to restart me? Find out. Hope not. Oh, nope. Can't do it. I can't share my screen. Can't do it. Jeez. I got a new computer, guys, and I can't do it. Um, so in the standings here, we've got... Let's go back one here. You know, Buffalo is a little bit erratic here. This is really crazy. Like, to me, they were, like, in a great situation. Yes, they're 5-3-2 and two in their last 10... But, you know, three games in a row lost, like losing three games in a row. It's just like they're up and down like a yo-yo. Ottawa's slowly marching 7-3-0 and in their last 10. You know, Detroit 6-3-1 and is kind of keeping pace here. So I don't, I don't believe in the Islanders or Florida, even with Bo Horvat for the Islanders. Florida, to me, is always going to be erratic. They have this typical Paul Maurice setup where it's kind of like their goal differential is zero or a negative one in this case. And, they're just going to be up and down like a yo-yo. And they got a bunch of games they've already played ahead of everyone. So right now, I don't know. You kind of got to think, is it Ottawa and Detroit that leapfrog Buffalo? I got to think Buffalo will go on another little streak here and make it a case against Washington. I don't know if you're going to catch Pittsburgh at this point. They just seem like they're a little bit more resilient. They have some of that veteran savvy. And regardless of who's in net for them, they seem to figure out a way to pull this off. So they seem to stick in that spot. I don't think they're going to bump up. You know, they're not going to catch anyone ahead of here. So we, I, I mentioned the Michigan um, scenario. We know we Jakob Braun is coming up, so that's kind of some of the news that's going on. There's one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, oh, Austin Matthews, it sounds like, is going to return. And then uh, sad news is Alexander Ovechkin's father passed away. So he's 71. I don't know if he was sick. Um Ah, so sad. It's really unfortunate. So that's what they're reporting about an hour ago. Um, he would, he was, you know, I think he lived with his parents, uh, but he had, he had heart surgery in 2014. I don't know if that's, you know, related. Um, and I know his dad played professional soccer. So this is very sad news uh, for the Ovechkin family and for Alex Ovechkin. So that's, that's very, very unfortunate. So sorry to hear that. Um, so there's two players I was going to mention. One is Chikrin, I think, remains out for Arizona. So is Chikrin going to be traded? It sure seems like it. If you're sitting him out this much and this early, is the trade deadline March 3rd? No. What's the trade deadline? It's March 3rd at 3 p.m. You're already sitting him out. <laughs> what the hell? You're going to sit him out for like two more weeks. And then Gavrikov's been set, sat out for trade uh, reasons. So there seems to be, you know, there obviously people need defensemen that are in contention. But, I mean, they must have thought something was imminent here with Chikrin. And then, you know, the, the Rangers grabbing Tarasenko was a smart move. However, we know Patrick Kane has come out has had this nagging injury, but I mean, it's still like he's still such a great player, and I think he would have been really, really a big piece of that team. Does Patrick King go to Buffalo? I would think this would make a lot more sense now. They are so close, and if they, but you know, you don't think he's going to want to go somewhere where he definitely gets in. They're not helping themselves, but they've got a lot, so many games in hand. If they got a Patrick King, that's such a huge difference in their lineup. I mean, does he go home to Buffalo where he's originally from? And then they sign him for another year or two years or whatever. Like he would have such a big impact on that team. That's it means to make a lot of sense to me. Uh, you know, the Rangers are probably done. New Jersey, that would be weird, but you never know. <laughs> Patrick Kane to New Jersey. Boston would potentially make some sense there. The Leafs, I'm sure, want to do this, and maybe they'll figure out a way to make that happen. 
So I don't know. Where do you think Patrick Kane will end up? It seems like he will move. I'm not sure about Jonathan Taves if he will move anywhere. Colorado could use him, but I just don't know how you fit that in. Colorado probably needs a defenseman more than anything right now. Is Kale McCarr back? Or is he still on IR? I haven't even followed what's going on in Colorado. Because he's still out, right? Yeah. Hmm. I think he's still ruled out as of last night. So, yeah, he's still out. That doesn't help him. They could use a, a Gavrikov or they could use... Yeah, he's still out. So that's not good. That seems to be concussion-related, right? So now they got him and Bo with... Oof, what a terrible scenario. So I, I could see a Gavrikov fitting in really well there. Chick would fit in a lot of places. Send him to Detroit right now. That you know, If they're, they're going to make that kind of run, can you imagine a Patrick Kane or in a... Chikrin and Stevie Eiser pulls off the magic wizard thing and then signs him. And that's not gonna happen. I can't see that happening. But <laughs> you never know. Imagine he flips Verona, gets Kane, signs him, and then you got Patrick Kane in Detroit. I mean, it's weird, but they're at that point where they had that kind of offense consistently. The injury thing's a problem, and he's him wanting to go to a playoff team is probably more realistic. That's why I can see some of these other teams. Who do you think that uh, Patrick Kane will end up with? It's a really interesting question. That. Good morning, RJ Calabro. Thank you so much for joining. Please hit the likes and subscribes. I won't stay on much longer. We've been on for 23 minutes. Uh, we've updated you on the situation with Jakob Verana, who has been recalled to replace the injured Lucas Raymond. If it's not good news, if Raymond is on the IR, that means it's for a little while. Does this mean Verona is back in the fold? They obviously can't rely on Philip Zadina. But maybe I think Verona is very capable of getting a lot of points there. Or to Intertap's point, does it become trade bait for something? And we know around the NHL, Chikrin and Gavrikov both seem to be being held out for trade reasons so they don't get hurt and that those teams can move those players. So you would think that's imminent, you know, that they're not going to just hold them out for no reason. Um, and then, you know, another win against the Canucks, good news for the Red Wings, and then also big, big game against our friends, the Edmonton Oilers. How do they – and then they got a back-to-back. -back. So, they've, you know, the Red Wings have a big back-to-back, -back. and I can't share my screen, unfortunately. Last night, you know, we had a, another big win for Carolina. I think that's the other thing is Carolina is like 8-1-1 one one their last 10 guys. Airline just continues to march on there. Montreal big win, obviously the 4 nothing win. That is a big deal. Justin Barron getting his second of the year, I think, is always good news. Um, you know, he had kind of an unfortunate start to the year. Your hero, Jonathan Drouin, getting three assists. Oh, my God. Is this the greatest player ever again? Don't believe it. Do they move Drouin? Somebody want your man? I wouldn't want your man, but you know my feeling on that. Um, New Jersey winning three to two over Columbus. Sharagovich getting uh, his twelfth of the year. Johnny Gaudreau getting his fifteenth. He has not been the problem or, or the solution in Columbus, by the way. Uh, Adam Bockfist getting in. That was good news. So having him back because he's missed a lot of time. He's played 21, 22 games now. So him getting on the uh, twelve points. Team C has and Kane. I mean, it must be a serious enough injury, and the price is so high, and it's been let, it's not like it's a new injury. So apparently, this has been going on for quite a while. He says he feels better than he did last year, and he had so many more points. And he doesn't have his running mate, Alex DeBrincat. You got to think if you put him in a much better scenario, he's going to just be fine. He'll at least be point a game somewhere. I mean, does he miss that much time? Really? I mean, he don't doesn't seem like it. Uh, what was the other game that was interesting? So the 6-2 to two win by St. Louis. What do you make of the St. Louis team? They're so inconsistent. They have no Tarasenko. They they rack up a win against Florida. That just is what Florida is. They're like, I don't know. Spencer Knight, only an 8-15 save percentage in that game. I think this is more a reflection of the erratic defensive style of the team. 944 save percentage for Bennington as Bennington goes is how this team will go in St. Louis. And you got to think that they're going to move out of Ryan O'Reilly at the some point here. Do they move out of Brandon Saad? Maybe. 
Do they move under Brandon Shen? He had two goals against Florida. Um, one against State, like Cairo, 24 goals in the year is good. But Carter Verhage having a great year in spite of the inconsistencies in Florida, 29 goals. I mean, this guy was a guy that, you know, when the Stanley Cup runs for the Tampa Bay Lightning was a fourth line guy, right? So that was, tells you how deep that organization is. Uh, Louis Drainen has been real good for Florida and 47 assists for Kachuk, which means he's at like six, 75. Wow. That was 69, 75 points in the year in 54 games. So uh, I don't know. Sometimes you just make bad choices. In my opinion, you got Barkov in. So yeah, bad. But how much of it is like is it is it Spencer Knight or is it also the way they play defense? Because I feel like they are they're just I don't know there's something off the way they play. So tonight Chicago versus Toronto. Chicago not doing so great, but maybe this is like Toronto saying, "Hey, let's pull a trigger on a Patrick Kane deal." I mean that would definitely help them. Can you imagine having those four players in Toronto? <laughs> like, that's not your problem. Samsonov supposedly getting the starter tonight. Tampa versus Arizona. It doesn't seem like Chikrin will be in. And then, of course, before mentioned Detroit at Edmonton, I believe. And I think this is in Edmonton. Colorado and Minnesota. No Kale McCarr. I presume tonight on Wednesday. I think he's still rolled out from the looks of it. And then Rangers and Vancouver. Vancouver can have a hard night against those Rangers. Those Rangers are clicking. Buffalo Anaheim, is this what gets Buffalo back in the win column? Three losses in a row. So weird. I mean, this is good news. Could they actually be further ahead in their development than people thought? I mean, they've had some key injuries, right? So that that's always a problem, and not having Caulfield doesn't help. You know, J- Jake Allen should be a good goalie, and Montembeau has actually turned into a decent goalie, and I think the difference is so slight between playoff and non-playoff teams or 560 versus 480 in, in win percentage that when you get a guy like Justin Barron coming up and suddenly he's playing well and he's blowing the right side, if that had just happened at the beginning of the year, you just never know. Maybe that would have been a big, big difference maker. I mean, I like Justin Barron. I always liked Justin Barron. He looked terrible in training camp and obviously got sent down because of it. So is that the difference? Like he's getting points and he's – you know, that trade is paying off the way we kind of hoped it would. So maybe that's, you know, part of the answer. you got six points in 17 games. So that's helpful. Do they move Josh Anderson? Quite possibly. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I appreciate everyone joining this morning. We look for you at Hockey Nation Live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And... Congrats to all the Habs fans on that big 4 nothing win. And we will look forward to – we will update you guys on Friday morning on the games tonight against Edmonton, tomorrow night against Calgary, and then preview the games on the weekend versus – or the game on the weekend against the Seattle Kraken. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not. And we look forward to seeing you guys soon.